Hi, welcome to Chavista Chronicles from Caracas. This is episode number 11. My name is Jesus Rodriguez Espinosa. Um, this week I want to talk about how an ordinary Venezuelan enjoy between quotation uh, the Caracas metro sub, I mean the subway here in Caracas. Mm, I also want to talk about uh, the new trend, media trend, called uh, Maduro Super Mustache. And uh, I am going to end up talking a little bit again about uh, our first anniversary in Orinoco Tribune. So to start with the use of the metro in Caracas, I have to say that I understand that Venezuela right now is in the middle of like an economic crisis, mostly caused by uh, U.S. sanctions and economic war and several years of uh, attacks from abroad and from inside Venezuela, but also uh, as a result of bad economic policy. Um, so I'm not, when, when I narrate, I mean, I want to explain to you how it's using the metro uh, and it's not nice. I don't want you to believe that I'm doing that not knowing that uh, most of the causes uh, on the bad shape of the metro service in Caracas right now is caused by those factors. So, I mean, I first have to tell you that for the last, I don't know, like four or five months, uh, I've been using regularly, I mean, at least eight or 10 times uh, a week the metro system in Caracas. Before that, I use it occasionally, but for the last four or five months, I've been using it uh, in a regular basis. And it has, I mean, it has its ups and downs. Uh, for example, two weeks ago, I, I mean, yes, two weeks ago, I, I felt like it was kind of improving. Or for example, last week it was terrible, and that's what I wanted to to talk a little bit about that because you know regular Venezuelans have to suffer a lot uh, that system. I mean that service. So last week uh, we had trouble with. I mean, you enter into one station and you are going east of Caracas or west, and then you uh, pass through like let's say five station and then the operator of the train tells you uh, that uh, you have to empty the train because there's, I mean, there's a problem with the train and you have to wait for the next one. And usually, almost all the time, right now there there's not too much rush hours in the Caracas metro. I mean, all the time the, the metro is packed because also uh, it's almost free. I mean, the tickets, for the metro cost 40 bolivars. That is like with one cent, you will be able to buy five rides in the metro of Caracas with, with, with one US dollar cent. So it's almost free and most of the time, uh, the machines are not working for several years already. The machine that takes the ticket, that usually uh, took the ticket. So uh, in, for the last months, they have been using people to take the ticket. And most of the time, the people is not there. So it's almost a free service. And you, and you have to be aware of that, I mean. And right now, a regular uh, bus, short ride bus in Caracas, costs you like, uh, 1,000 bolivars, and it's about to, ra to be raised to 1,500 bolivars. That is less than, uh, even with the raise, less than 10 cents, but in comparison to what you pay in the metro, uh, it's a lot, of, I mean, it's a big difference, and, and taking into consideration man, that most of Venezuelans do not have, I mean, are being uh, the victims of the U.S. sanctions and the bad economic shape of Venezuela, I mean, that means a lot, and that's why this system is also collapsed, because uh, 
there's a lot of people using the Caracas Metro right now. <clears throat> so last week we suffered that. We passed five stations and then they tell you that you have to enter the train and wait for the next one. So you enter the train and you go to the station that is already packed with people waiting for the regular train. So that creates a big mess. And in addition to that, the, sometimes there are delays because of these same problems with some trains, I believe. Some people say that also within the metro, I mean, there are workers that are anti-Chavistas, that are right-wingers that also sabotage and try to get into people's nerves in order to get people uh, angry against the government. So that's a possibility here in Venezuela. I'm not saying that that's it. I don't think that that's the cause of most of the problems, but I believe that there is something about that. Um, so, I mean, so if a ride usually takes 30 minutes from to pass like 10 or 12 stations from east to west or from west to east of Caracas, uh, mm, with these problems, the times double. So, so it's complicated. And in the middle of that, you have the air conditioning system not working in most of the trains. I'm not saying, I mean, there are trains that have the air conditioning working, but if you ask me about a percentage, I could tell you that at least from my use of the metro, uh, it is like 75% or 80% of the trains do not have air conditioning, and again, we understand that we are in the middle of, a, a, you know, a blockade and U.S. sanctions and everything. But you know, I believe that that there are things that can be fixed if you put resources and commitment to do so. Actually, uh, last Friday, I believe I read somewhere that the metro system was going to be uh, this weekend like uh, in uh, big maintenance. I, I mean that there was going to be a big maintenance operation and I believe that might be the result of all these problems that we, people that live in Caracas suffered last week with the metro and all the faulty trains. So I wanted to tell you about that because I believe that that's the spirit when you talk about chronicles and, and you need to have a sense of how the daily life of a Venezuelan is, a Chavista Venezuelan. So I hope that that the situation uh, might be a little bit better. I'm not saying that we should have a med, like a German metro system or something like that, especially right now. But I believe that the government need to address that problem because uh, there's a lot of people that say, and they don't are necessarily uh, anti chavista say that uh, there's a big catastrophe about to happen because of the loss of maintenance, the lack of human resources. I mean, there are operators, workers that are resigning because they don't receive good salaries, and, and you are, you know, putting to work people there that have very limited training, so... So it's complicated, it's problematic, and I believe that the government needs to address that. Some people say that the government, for example, needs to use the National Guard to operate the metro, and that might be a possibility. I don't see uh, uh, a problem there yet. But, of course, there's always a problem of unions and affecting workers' rights and things like that, so you have to be careful with that. But anyway, I mean, that's something that might be done also uh, like campaigns, uh, national campaigns to fix the metro. I mean, inviting all Venezuelans with capabilities in order to uh, fix, that, fix that kind of problem. I mean, the air condition, try to fix with the limited resources that we have, trying to fix air conditioner system and, and train systems and things like that. So I wanted to tell you about that because I believe that's among those problems that might be used by right-wingers in order to to attack or, or hit the street in these days. Actually, I've been talking about that for the last, in the last two, 
broadcasts. And, and actually this week, President Maduro talked about the, you know, some intelligence information that let the government believe that the right-wingers are trying to hit the streets and that they have intelligence information about that. So that's something that is in there. So I believe that the government needs to address, especially the problems with services, because services and, and, and labor, I mean, salaries uh, that might be used by right-wingers in order to try to create trouble, which is the only way that they can use to try to get rid of Maduro before January next year, when the so-called uh, interim pre presidency of uh, Guaido ends. So let's see what happened. Then I want to talk a little bit about Maduro super mustache, which is this new trend. I mean, I, I try to make fun of it, but it's kind of scary because, I mean, but it's not new, I mean. I remember in the 70s and the 80s when they said that whatever bad thing happened in our countries was caused by Fidel Castro and the Cubans. So that's not something new. Now they say that whatever bad thing between quotation happened in Latin America uh, is Maduro or the Cubans the blame. So that's why Maduro said a few days ago that he should be something like super mustache, that he just has to move his mustache and, and there are protests where, whenever he wants. Uh, whatever he wants, I mean. So, so they have been talking in Ecuador, in Chile, about Maduro being the blame of all the popular revolts that are happening there because not of Maduro, but because of the craziness of the economic decisions of those governments, capitalist or liberal, following IMF uh, directions. So there's nothing new there. And also actually uh, uh, even Brazil blamed Venezuela for some oil spill that they have in the south of Brazil that doesn't have, I mean, there's no way that an oil spill in Venezuela has, way, I mean, has waves to reach uh, center or south Brazilian shores. But they were uh, high Brazilian authorities blaming Venezuela for some sort of oil spill that they have. So that's how crazy this, you know, trend is. So, so we have to be aware of that. We try to make fun of it, but uh, but you have to pay attention also to that because there's crazy people that actually believe that we in Venezuela, a country seized, located, and almost broke by U.S. sanctions, uh, is capable of you know uh, destabilizing other countries. So you have to be. Uh, pay attention to that. Actually, somehow that connects with Venezuela winning the seat in the Human Rights uh, Council, the United Nations Human Rights Council. And here the right-wingers start saying they, they were crying like for two or three days and after they processed the hit, the punch, I mean, uh, uh, they start blaming Maduro and, and all the money that he spent. I don't know from where he had that money uh, to buy the votes from different countries. That's what they say here. So I want to talk about those few things. And just to end up this podcast, I just want to remind you that we are working in our anniversary. We're going to have the live stream, Facebook live stream, on Sunday, November the 27th. We want you to be there. We want you to ask us questions, not only about the website, but also about Venezuela. So... I hope that we can interact a little bit with you, our readers, that day. And of course, I want to invite you again to help us in this donation campaign that we really need, because we have to pay several uh, important services in order to keep working, to keep moving forward. So we already posted some information last week uh, about uh, this uh, economic financial needs that we have, but we actually, uh, we also uh, yesterday published another call for donations, and we're going to keep doing that uh, 
in order to try to keep the campaign alive. And we need you not only to donate if you can, but also to share uh, that information about our need for donations about your friends and people that you know that might be capable uh, to donate something to our cause, to Orinoco Tribune, of course, if they like us. Uh, so, so I hope that you enjoy this podcast and that you help us with this uh, first uh, anniversary donation campaign. And thank you again for listening to us. Bye-bye.